Thursday morning. <sighs> okay. Uh, I wanted to talk about the game The Witcher 3, uh, which is kind of briefly review it and explain why I can't finish it, um, or haven't been able to up to this point. Uh, backstory, uh, The Witcher 3 is this game, um, uh, let's see. Alright, how to go through this. Uh, starting at the beginning, The Witcher 3 is based on a, a series of books written by properly mangling his name, Andrzej, Andrzej, Andrzej Sapowski. It's a Polish writer who wrote uh, The Witcher. It's a series of books about a guy who's a witcher. Uh, in the storyline, a witcher is briefly a, a child who's adopted by a witcher school. Uh, they're given these tests, they're given these weird alchemical magical things that kills, I believe, two-thirds of the children who go through this, but the ones who survive become witchers, who are stronger, faster, have supernatural senses and can uh, drink witcher potions which will kill other people but give them magical powers and do cool stuff. A witcher is armed with magical signs so they have some, some magical powers but not not like a full-blown wizard, sorceress, whatever and that's a story point in the books where uh, the witcher runs into actual sorceresses in particular. What else can they do? Uh, other than that, they're just very knowledgeable about different fighting styles. They have a steel sword if they have to fight something normal. They have a silver sword if they have to fight something supernatural. They're very knowledgeable about the supernatural monsters in particular, and they sort of serve this purpose in society, the society of the fantasy novels of The Witcher, they, their job is to hunt monsters for money. Basically, they're professional monster killers. Uh, thus, and thus, that's the introduction. The main character in these novels is uh, Geralt, the White, the white Wolf. Uh, he's a one of the Witchers. A very successful one. It's, they're very enjoyable books. I mean, I'm, I want to review this game, but as a backstory, I'm kind of reviewing the books, I guess. The, and they're they're damn good books. I, I actually quite like them. The ones that have been translated into English. They're, bear in mind, this is a, a Polish writer. Not all of the, the Witcher books have been translated into English, as far as I know. Um, what else? I think that's a good lead-in. Um, uh, the 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 novel novels written by that guy. Uh, I'm not going to continue mangling his name. Poor guy. That's that's my own failing. I can't pronounce his name well. Uh, it's, it's not important. At any rate, at some point uh, back in 2007, I think, yes, 2007, uh, CD Projekt Red is this company that I think was formed specifically to make the Witcher video game. If they made something else, I'm not aware of it. In fact, if they've made anything else, I'm not aware of it. So the only thing they really have is the Witcher franchise of games, and that's a pretty damn good basis for your company, because they're crazy freaking good. Um, it differs a bit in that you know, it's, it's a Polish fantasy, written by a modern Polish fantasyist. So it's more violent, and there is actually a bit more... Uh, sex, sexuality in it than, than you'd normally see in a 
imagine a regular fantasy novel these days. <clears throat> it's a very, it's a different perspective. It's, you know, we're accustomed to having everything we read written by mostly, or at least in my case anyway, by American writers or British writers. A few translations of stuff. So that's cool in its own right. The Witcher games reflect this. Uh, we see Geralt the White Wolf. He goes on a whole bunch of adventures, mostly killing monsters. They, which is neat, because it allow the premise of the story is a professional witch hunter, so we don't have the, well, why is your character wandering around murdering monsters for money? There's no question about that. That's his job. That's why he does that. More interesting than that is in the Witcher games, he, see, he ends up getting involved with political conflicts, and he ends up having to fight people, which, you know, he's a witcher. He's not supposed to be fighting people. He's supposed to be fighting monsters. He gets caught up in other things, and it's never, I, you need to save the world, Geralt. It's, he, and although he kind of does, it's not, he's more like a person who happens to be in this world doing his own thing for his own reasons. And everyone around him is often portrayed. The, he meets very few people who are unalloyed good. Or for that, although he does meet villains. Even then, a lot of them are sort of. I'm trying to think of a good example. The main villain in these. Second game? No, God, it was the first. Okay, main character, main villain in the first game. Was it the first game? God, it's. I can't remember what. Oh yeah, it was the first game. Yeah. So the main villain in the first game is just doing what he's doing because he believes it's for the best. He's trying to save humanity. You know. So it's portrayed that way. It's you don't have cartoonish villains. You really don't in this game at all. In the series of games, you have some genuinely bad guys, but you know. Advancing the the storyline is, is kind of convoluted. There's a lot going on, and that's cool. I, I like complicated storylines, and the first two games aren't terribly open world, not very sandbox. There is a plot and you're sort of driven towards it. You can meander around, you can go back and forth to different places, go on adventures. It's not Skyrim by any means, but it does let you run around and do your own thing. And theoretically, well not theoretically, I mean actual, actually, you you have different choices that affect you know, who lives, who dies, uh, who moves forward, uh, who gets held back, whose plot is advanced and whose isn't. And you get the opportunity to sleep with lots of women because that's, that's how Gerald rolls, I guess. Um, moving to the third game, the last game, which is what I want, really want to talk about. The rest of it's just lead up. The Witcher 3 is the best, and the biggest by any by a lot. Uh, that game is really very much Skyrim with The Witcher. I mean, you just, you so open world, it's crazy. Uh, I've played that game and just like, huh, I wonder what's, there's like nothing over here on the map that I've run into. Let's go see what's over there. And there was a lot over there. This game is enormous and it just compounds the sort of, uh, which you get in lots of games like Mass Effect and others where there's the big decisions where you've done, you've made this decision and now this person is dead, or this person is now in power, or this person has suffered some awful fate, or this group is now prominent, or this group has been destroyed, and so on and so forth.
with. You, know, you can control through your actions, often indirectly, without making conscious decisions. Like, uh, there's one plot where there's a baron and his wife, with a disenfranchised married couple, and there's evil witches, and there's all sorts of stuff, and orphans who are going to be eaten. And it's like, doing some things will get the wife killed, and doing other things, but will save the children. On the flip side, saving the children leads to a lot of people in this village getting killed, and back and forth. You get the idea. Very cool game, and they have a number of expansions to it that added a lot of cool stuff. One thing, I was just going to go to the next part, but it's worth talking about Gwent. Gwent. Um, previous editions of this game have had games in the games. Dice poker was was the original thing. There were also fist fights and arm wrestling and other stuff. So Gerald would run around and occasionally he would stop and play games within the game. And, uh, you know, not to brag, but I was kind of like the dice poker master for a while. So it's true. And I kind of like dice poker, but I could see why they needed to replace it. it it's just dice poker. It's not a complicated game. God, if you had, you know, ten six-sided dice, you could play this game anywhere. It's a real simple game. Neat game, too, but very simple. They replaced it with Gwent, which took me out of the game. At first, I was not well disposed towards Gwent, because Gwent is a collectible card game in the world of Witcher, which was weird and incomprehensible to me at first. But, I mean, I, I got over that eventually, because it's a fun-ass game. Uh, Gwent, there have been times, like, I feel like not playing The Witcher, but I do want to play Gwent, so I'm just going to go play The Witcher, have Geralt find someone who's playing Gwent, and just play Gwent. It's a great game. It's a collectible card game. It's lots of fun. It has a brilliant mechanism where the purpose of the game is to win three rounds? God, it's been so long since I've played. played Witcher 3. It's, it's been actually a couple months. But the idea is you have a certain number of cards. From You have your deck. You've played out a certain number of cards. And except for special cards that allow you to change the rules, you don't get any more cards. And you have to win several rounds. So if you spend all of your cards winning one round, the first round, you've won the first round, but now you're out of cards. So you have to, like, balance that out. Like, uh, oh, do I, you know, do I want to lose the first round on purpose because my opponent's actually already played some of his better cards? It's clever. And it has some really neat rules. It's a fun game. <sighs> anyway. Witcher 3. Uh, I love this game. There are two expansions. I believe at this point I have both, I think. Once again, it's been a while since I played it, and that's kind of the, the impetus for this. Because I wanted to do a review for it, but I also wanted to mention I, I can't play this. I've been having a lot of trouble playing this game. It's a thing going on with my own life, where, you know, kind of depressed, uh, stressed, uh, job. But the complexity of the game, it's just so complex. It's like, oh, God, it's just like all this stuff to do. And it's the same as Skyrim, where at some point in the past, I've just been like, I can't play this game right, right now because it's just, there's just too much going on in this game. And with Witcher, how to explain this? In Skyrim, if you didn't do a tenth of the stuff that you could do in the game, and there was a lot of stuff to do. It was fine. It didn't affect anything. There wasn't a there's was a major storyline, but you didn't need to do a damn single other thing to complete the major storyline. And not completing the major storyline didn't affect anything else. Witcher 
has a problem there because there is a major storyline. There's a major thing going on. There's a the war with the uh, Nilfgaardian Emperor. There's there's you know trying to find his daughter and all sorts of jazz going on. And if you don't do the main storyline stuff doesn't work. You can't really advance certain stuff. And, and likewise, uh, if you do advance it, certain options disappear. Like characters like, oh, okay, now we're done with this. I have to go off to some place to be safe. So that character is not available anymore to hang out with and, and interact with and do missions and stuff with. You can... Uh, content can be sort of removed from you because you can't because you you've gotten past a certain point, which adds just a, a layer of complexity to it. So it, it's like, oh, do you have, there's a lot of stuff you have to keep track of. So I like the game. I haven't been able to play it in a little while. And it's probably changing. Like I could probably play it tonight if I wanted to, but I've been busy doing videos for example, which I've been enjoying a great deal, so I just keep doing that. It's, the whole point is to have fun, so if I'm doing this and I'm having fun, then I'm going to do this. Nah. Um, that's pretty much it. So if you've not played The Witcher, it's really fun. It's a great game. Very complex storyline. Very deep characters. But boy, be aware you are diving into a big ass pool. It's it has a lot going on. It is not a like a like a like a mobile game where you just pick it up, and, oh, play it for five minutes, and put it back down. It's the opposite. It's whatever the exact opposite of that is. It's the complete opposite. It's huge. It's a huge game. It's bigger than Skyrim. And that says something. Um, <laughs> speaking of which, when is Skyrim 2 coming out? I know it's in the works. Um, yeah, that's all. I'm out.